From Tatum's dramatic off-ball cut and spinning lay-in at the buzzer, to Boston's utterly perfect defense a few seconds earlier, despite Kyrie Irving going off down the stretch and dropping 39, here's every reason for how Boston pulled off the impossible in Game 1 against Brooklyn. The Jays proved why they were the two most valuable defensive small forwards in basketball this past season, combining to clamp up Easy Money Sniper, blocking KD's shot multiple times, forcing Kevin into six turnovers, and holding him to nine of 24 shooting. We all expect Durant to bounce back, but one thing's for sure, the Celtics versus Nets looks like the Eastern Conference Finals as opposed to the first round, as this has a chance to be a generationally great series. Just 10.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepflowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. In one of the most intense, all-around spectacular games of basketball I've ever witnessed, four Boston starters scored at least 20 points in Tatum, Brown, Horford, and Smart. Despite Boston's defense making it tough on Kyrie Irving, somehow the man found a way to rub his talents in the face of the organization he left behind in 2019's free agency, smoothly dropping 39 points while using the Celtics fans saying F Kyrie as fuel to his fire and giving the finger back to them. But while fans in Beantown witnessed their team blow a 15 point second half advantage, the offense stayed poised and continued to execute. Articulating the C's final possession, I thought Golden State's Draymond Green put it best, who tweeted out, and there's the difference in this Celtics team. Last year, Marcus Smart would have taken that shot. Ime got him to buy in and be the Marcus Smart everyone loves out of Oklahoma State. Beautiful. Looking like a true PG again, that's what made him special. Before I saw that from Draymond, and even before the final play, I simply tweeted out, Marcus Smart is a heavily underrated offensive player, and the C's point guard made that take age extremely well, at least in the short term, so I thank him temporarily for that. Game 1 saw Smart drop 20 to go along with 7 boards, 6 dimes, and 2 steals on 8 for 17 shooting from the floor while knocking down 4 triples. He's been streaky in the past, but it's absolutely crucial for Boston's playoff chances that Smart intelligently picks his spots offensively, stays efficient, but most importantly for Smart, he of course needs to manage the tempo of the offense and find Jalen and Jason. For the C's as a whole in Game 1, veterans in top scoring roles who needed to step up did just that. But more importantly, whether it was Jalen Brown's chase down block, Al Horford's ability to switch and stay with smaller guards, the backbone in Marcus Smart's typically dangerous all-out effort ranging from the perimeter to the paint, or even the team's best player in JT, Boston made it clear to the NBA universe why they had the NBA's number one ranked defense and maybe further building off the Celtics video I posted a few days ago, where I talked about why they were built for the finals, you can go watch that after this. But building off that, is the fact that Boston's defense has been particularly insane since they fell to 20 and 21 midway through the season. Because from January 10th until the end of the year, the Celtics are number one by far in defensive rating, as their 3.8 gap between the number two ranked Phoenix Suns over that span is a bigger difference between the number 2 ranked Suns and the number 15 ranked Cavaliers. And when your best offensive talent is getting down in a defensive stance and clamping up, that sets the example for the entire squad on this end of the floor. Jason Tatum guarded 88 possessions on the Nets in Game 1 and allowed just 12 points on 14 field goal attempts, forcing 6 turnovers. Not to mention, Mann also dropped 31 points on just 18 field goal attempts while dishing out 8 dimes and hitting the game winner. And that performance should tell us that Jason's no longer some talent that everyone keeps waiting to blossom. He's officially built for the moment and is a two-way superstar. Speaking of all-star two-way talents, who knows where Boston would have been if Jalen Brown didn't produce like he did last night. When Udoka's offense went cold, Brown just kept attacking and opening up the floor for his teammates with relentless drives and finishes or drives and kicks. You can't forget Boston was down 5 points in the final minutes, but JB gave the TD Garden and his teammates life with a clutch catch and shoot from Tatum. Then down 3 with 50 seconds left, Brown bodied off Bruce Brown for the lay-in. Next offensive possession, down 1, Jalen brought the ball up the court dishing off the hockey assist, which ended in the Tatum buzzer beating game winner. Next we'll go in depth on how the Celtics made it a miserable night for Kevin Durant, but for Kyrie. Maybe doing everything in your power to keep Marcus Smart on Irving at all times is the way to go, 
Smart guarded Kyrie on 26 different plays. Kyrie only attempted five shots with Marcus on him, while Irving scored 10 points and went two for five from the field on such possessions. In terms of the defense on the four-time scoring champion KD, Boston both relentlessly battled over the top of screens to crowd his jumper and were constantly trapping Durant and then taking his cookies. The last minute of the first frame sees KD utilize a Nick Claxton screen on the left wing, and the key here is how Al Horford's in a shallow drop coverage not fully back in the paint, which makes this 15-footer way too contested to knock down. Despite Claxton making solid contact, give credit to Batman Grant Williams fighting over the pick and contesting without fouling. After a patented momentum crossover that takes up about half the court like this one, it seemed like Durant was going to tear apart Boston's defense and find his typical flow, but the Celtics' second layer of defense with their weak side rotations made it so damn tough on him. Recognizing that KD's about to attack with no one at the bucket, watch how the Defensive Player of the Year Marcus Smart flies over to the paint in a few steps, going straight up to contest Durant's drive. Smart's contest forces Kevin to change his release, and the attempt doesn't even hit the rim. The DPOY-fueled Celtic clamps held Durant to merely seven first-half points, while the Nets franchise player scored 11 in the third quarter alone, the Slim Reaper was still forced into some off-balance attempts after Boston took away his hotspots. This possession sees Jason and Al switch the Bruce Brown screen, and by cutting off his right, Horford makes Durant's path to the rim much more difficult. Smart stunts off Kyrie to make an impact in the lane. Daniel Tice fronting Andre Drummond and picking up on KD also deters him from getting a clean look in the restricted area. All Durant ends up getting is a contested fadeaway over Horford on the left baseline. That's a championship-level defensive stance, which Ime Udoka's ball club has gotten used to making. Nearing the fourth quarter with the shot clock winding down, Durant takes on Tatum in an iso as Jason keeps just a tad bit of space not wanting the 12-time All-Star to explode to the bucket. It's hard to recognize, but Derek White's slight help from the right corner also helps to cut off Kevin's driving lane. Jason does an outstanding job of not biting on Durant's pump fake, staying down, and forces Durant into a challenging fallaway jumper, which Tatum actually blocks, something you almost never see on a shot from KD. And then what you've been waiting for, Brooklyn's final possession of the game, where they had a one-point lead looking to steal home court advantage, Kyrie had already dropped 18 in the frame, so Boston was keen on not letting him get off another attempt. Smart and Horford force the ball out of Irving's hands as he throws it out to Kevin. At first, Durant wants to drive, but Tatum keeps supreme on-ball pressure and then cuts him off. After Jason swipes the ball, that leads Durant to step backward, and he hoists up a 28-foot fadeaway directly as the shot clock expires and Horford grabs the board which ultimately led right into Tatum's game-winning layup. Durant finished the game with 23 points on 9 for 23 shooting, which is 37.5%. That included going 1 of 5 from beyond the arc and not scoring in the paint. He also committed a game-high 6 turnovers. Following the outing, Durant said, I played fast and turned the ball over. I've just got to slow down and play my game, but they did a good job of making me see bodies. Durant's likely going to score more than 23 points next time out, but Boston has to live with that and realize it's less about the Slim Reaper's bucket getting and more about desperately forcing him to work extremely hard for anything he gets. That approach will not only need to be maintained, but further intensified as Kevin's ultimately going to make adjustments. But overall, Game 1 saw the Seas display why their defense is championship caliber. In your opinion, why is Boston versus Brooklyn such an exciting series? Best answer now below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Damon Lewis, who says the most dominant aspect of the Warriors in Game 1 was playing great defense on Jokic while not doubling. It keeps the rest of Denver out of the equation while wearing him out. On O, it's the ball movement getting good looks and finding some easy buckets near the rim. Total team victory with a 10-man rotation bodes well for the next two and a half months. Appreciate every in-depth take. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.